In this video I'll be going through the 2021 IGCSE Physics Multiple Choice Core Paper. The diagram shows a stone of irregular shape, which property of the stone can be found by lowering it into a measuring cylinder half filled with water. And so if we have our measuring cylinder with a particular amount of water in it, when we submerse our stone, our water level is going to rise. The difference in our volume readings is going to indicate the volume of the rock. And so our answer is volume. Two stones of different weights fall at the same time from a table. Air resistance may be ignored. What will happen and why? If we're able to ignore air resistance, then all objects accelerate at the same rate due to gravity, meaning that both stones will hit the floor at the same time. Because they're under acceleration, they do not fall at a constant speed. They will have an acceleration of roughly 10 meters per second per second. So our answer is A. The distance time graph for a motorway journey is shown. What is the average speed for the journey? Our average speed is going to be our distance divided by our time. We see we travel a total distance of 100 kilometers over a duration of 120 minutes. Now if we were to convert this to kilometers per hour, we just need to recognize that 120 minutes is 2 hours. 100 kilometers per 2 hours means 50 kilometers per hour, so our answer must be A. Diagram 1 shows a sealed plastic bottle containing a hollow glass sphere and a steel ball. Diagram 2 shows the same bottle after it has been shaken. Diagram 3 shows the same bottle after it has been shaken again until the broken glass is in tiny pieces. The mass of the bottle and contents in diagram 1 is M1, M2 in diagram 2, and M3 in diagram 3, which statement gives the correct relation between M1, M2, and M3. Because we've had no mass enter or leave the system, we've merely had the existing mass broken into tiny pieces, our masses should all be the same. Therefore M1 is equal to M2 and M2 is equal to M3 is the correct answer. On Mars, the acceleration of freefall is 3.7 meters per second per second. What is the weight of a 2 kilogram mass on Mars? The equation for our weight force is force equals our mass times our gravitational acceleration, where our mass is 2, and our gravitational acceleration is 3.7, which gives us 7.4 newtons, and so our answer must be C. The mass of an empty flask is 34 grams. The volume of the liquid added to the flask is 20 centimeter cubed. The total mass of the flask and the liquid is 50 grams. What is the density of the liquid? And so our density is our mass per volume, where because we're looking for the density of the liquid, we need to use the mass of the liquid, which is going to be the total mass minus the mass of the empty flask, divided by our volume, which gives me 0.8 grams per centimeter cube. And so A must be our answer. The diagram shows a solid object on a flat surface, with two forces acting on the object. What is the resultant force on the object? Our forces are in opposition so they cancel each other out, but not entirely because our 4 is greater than our 3. So our resultant force is going to be 1 newton in this direction, which is towards the right. The extension load graph for a spring is shown. The unstretched length of the spring is 17.0 centimeters. When an object is suspended from the spring, the length of the spring is 19.2 centimeters. What is the weight of the object? And so we have our unstretched spring, and then when we add a mass, we have it stretching by a certain amount. This extension from our unstretched position is what we see graphed here. To find this extension, we need to take this full length here, which is 19.2, and subtract our unstretched length, which is our 17 which gives me 2.2 centimeters. Reading that from our graph at 2.2, we see we have a force of three newtons. And so our answer must be D. Which situation involves no work being done and no energy being transferred? A car skidding to a stop on a road is going to see kinetic energy being transferred into heat and sound. So it's not A. A crane lifting a load is going to see an increase in gravitational potential energy so it's not this one either. A heavy load hanging from a strong bar implies that it's not moving, and no implication of energy being transferred. A student dragging a big box over a rough floor is similar to our car skidding to a stop, where we have energy being transferred into heat and sound, so we know it's not D, therefore it must be C. 
A student suggests that there are several ways of transferring energy to a small stationary block of iron on a smooth table. He makes the following suggestions. Heat it, shine a light on it, and pass a current through it. Which suggestions are correct? Heating it is going to give it thermal energy. Shining light on it will do the same, as will passing a current through it. And so it must be 1, 2, and 3. Two men, X and Y, try to move identical heavy boxes, P and Q. Man X tries to push box P along the floor. The box does not move because an object is in the way. Man Y lifts box Q from the floor onto a shelf. Which man does the most work on their box, and which box gains the most energy? Lifting the box is going to be doing the most work, so we know it must be man Y. And whereas box P is going to gain a small amount of thermal energy, we can consider it insignificant compared with the gravitational potential energy gained by box Q. And so our answer must be D. A book has a mass of 400 grams. The surface of the book in contact with the table has dimensions 0.1 meters by 0.2 meters. The gravitational field strength G is 10 newtons per kilogram. What is the pressure exerted on the table due to the book? Pressure is force divided by area. Our force is going to be our mass of 400 grams or 0.4 kilograms multiplied by our gravitational field strength of 10 and then divided by our area of 0.1 times 0.2 which gives me 200 newtons per meter square. So our answer must be D. A mercury barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure, which distance gives a measure of the atmospheric pressure. And so because our pressure outside our barometer is greater than the pressure inside our barometer, we're going to see the mercury rise up. The distance that it rises up is our measure of atmospheric pressure, which is our distance B. Air trapped in a sealed bottle increases in temperature, which row shows the changes that occur to the trapped air. An increase in temperature is going to result in an increase in pressure and an increase in the average speed of the molecules in the air. And so our answer must be D. Very small pollen grains are suspended in water. A bright light shines from the side. When looked at through a microscope, small specks of light are seen to be moving in a random jerky manner. What are the moving specks of light? Our sources of light are the reflections from the pollen grains, which are moving because they are being hit by water molecules. And so our answer must be B. Why are small gaps left between the metal rails of a railway track? On a hot day, our metal rails are going to expand, which is the reason we have these small gaps. If the gaps weren't there, then our tracks might buckle. And so the answer is A. B is not correct because on a hot day we would not expect contraction. C is wrong because on a cold day we would not expect expansion. And although on a cold day we would expect contraction, this doesn't explain the need to have gaps. All thermometers require a physical property that changes with temperature, which property would not be suitable for use in a thermometer. Pressure changes with temperature, which makes it a good choice, as does volume and electrical resistance, but not mass. And so D is our correct answer. The thermal capacity of object Y is greater than that of object Z. What is a consequence of this? Right away, our thermal capacity has nothing to do with the melting point, so we can rule out A and C. The definition of thermal capacity is that it needs more energy to raise its temperature, which means that our answer must be D. Two students carry out different experiments to compare the abilities of different metals to conduct thermal energy. In experiment one, the bar is heated for one minute and the length of wax strip that melts is measured. In experiment two, the bar is heated and the time taken for the pin to drop is measured. What happens to each of these measurements when a better conductor of thermal energy is tested? Using a better conductor means our temperature is going to raise quicker, meaning we're going to see an increase in the length of melted wax strip and a decrease in the amount of time taken for the pin to drop. And so our answer must be C. In which substances is convection a method of thermal energy transfer? Convection only occurs in fluids, which includes both air and water, so it's not these two. And it does not include wood, which rules out C. So our answer must be A. The diagram represents a wave on a rope. Which type of wave is shown, and which labelled arrows shows the wavelength of the wave? The wave shown is a transverse wave, 
because our displacement is perpendicular to the velocity of the wave, and our wavelength is depicted by y. And so our answer must be d. The diagrams show water waves in three different situations. The arrows show the direction of travel of the waves. What does each diagram show? Our diagram 1 is depicting reflection, diagram 2 is depicting refraction, and diagram 3 is depicting diffraction. And so our answer must be D. The diagram shows a narrow beam of light incident on a glass air boundary. Some of the light emerges along the surface of the glass and some is reflected back into the glass. Which row is correct? This is an example of total internal reflection. It is not the case because we still have our refracted ray. But we know we're at the critical angle because the ray is going along the boundary. And so our answer is A. An object is placed in front of a thin converging lens. The diagram shows the path of two rays from the top of the object. An image of the object is formed on a screen to the right of the lens. How does this image compare with the object? First of all, our ray going straight through the middle is going to continue as it is, as is our ray through our focal point. Our object is therefore going to be inverted and also enlarged. Therefore, our correct answer must be A. A student is asked to give two uses of four different types of electromagnetic radiation, in which row are both the uses correct. Radio waves don't have the energy to sterilise medical equipment, but they are used for mobile phone masts. Microwaves are used by mobile phones, but once again don't have enough energy to sterilise medical equipment. Infrared is used in remote controllers, and also in intruder alarms. X-rays are indeed used for security at airports, but are certainly not used in intruder alarms. Our correct answer, therefore, must be C. The diagrams represent the waves produced by four sources of sound. The scales are the same for all the diagrams. Which sound has the highest frequency? If we assume that our wave speed is constant, then our highest frequency must have the lowest wavelength. Our lowest or shortest wavelength is depicted in D. Diagram 1 shows a small compass needle with its poles marked. It is not near any magnetic materials. Diagram 2 shows a bar magnet with its poles marked. The compass needle is placed at point P. In which direction will the north pole of the compass needle point? If we have our compass here, then the north tip of our needle is going to be attracted towards the south pole. The north pole is therefore going to point to the right. Which diagram shows the pattern and direction of the magnetic field lines around a bar magnet? First of all, our magnetic field lines must and must also point south, which these do and these don't. Our answer must therefore be C. A student rubs a plastic rod with a cloth. The rod becomes positively charged. What has happened to the rod? Our agents of charge are our electrons and not our protons meaning that our electrons move and our protons don't. Because electrons are negatively charged, gaining electrons will make our rod negative, whereas losing electrons will make our rod positive, which is what we're looking for. And so our answer must be C. The circuit diagram shows a cell connected to an ammeter and two resistors. What is the current in the circuit? Ohm's law tells us that V equals IR. Rearranging for current gives us I equals V over R. Our resistors in series add together to give us a total resistance of 8 ohms. Therefore our voltage of 6 divided by 8 gives us 0.75 amps, which is option A. The diagram shows an electric circuit, which row describes what happens when the temperature rises. Component X is a thermistor, which unless otherwise indicated, when the temperature rises its resistance is going to decrease. If our resistance of our component X decreases, then so too must its voltage drop. The relationship between our source voltage Vx and Vy is that our source voltage is equal to Vx plus Vy, such that if this one drops, then this one must increase to keep our source the same. Therefore the potential difference across component Y must increase and our answer is B. 
Diagram 1 shows a resistor connected in a circuit. Diagram 2 shows an identical resistor connected in parallel with the first one. What is the combined resistance of the two resistors? You might expect that adding a resistor is going to add to the resistance, but what's more important is that you have added another pathway. And no matter how bad that pathway might be, it still allows more current to flow, and therefore results in a decreased resistance. Therefore our combined resistance of the two resistors is going to be less than in the circuit of diagram 1. The current in a lamp connected on its own to the main supply is 0.6 amps. A table decoration has three of these lamps connected in parallel, which rating of fuse is suitable to protect this circuit. Three of these lamps in parallel is going to draw three times as 0.6 amps which is 1.8 amps, which means that these ones are too small, leaving us with our option D. A solenoid is connected to a very sensitive ammeter. A rod is inserted into one end of the solenoid. The ammeter shows that there is a small electric current in the solenoid while the rod is moving. Which rod is being inserted? The situation here is electromagnetic induction, which as the name suggests, requires that the rod be magnetic. And so our answer is B. The diagram shows a transformer, there are 460 turns on the primary coil and 24 turns on the secondary coil. The primary voltage is 230 volts. What is the secondary voltage? The ratio of our secondary voltage to our primary is equal to the inverse ratio of the turns. Solving that for Vs by multiplying both sides by 230 gives me 12 volts. And so our answer must be B. A class is designing a DC motor. To achieve a greater turning effect, three suggestions are made. Have a larger current in the coil of the motor, which will work. Have a stronger magnet in the motor, which will also work. And put a larger number of turns on the coil, which will also have this effect. Our answer must therefore be A, 1, 2 and 3. The charge on a proton is E. What is the charge on an electron and what is the charge on a neutron? The charge on an electron is opposite to that of a proton or negative E, and the charge on a neutron is zero. So our answer must be D. The nuclide notation of an isotope strontium-90 is this here. Which statement is correct? Our atomic number of 38 means there are 38 protons, and our atomic mass is our protons plus our neutrons, which means our number of neutrons must be 90 minus 38, which gives us 52 neutrons. So our answer must be B. Which statement about alpha particles and gamma rays is correct? Alpha particles are a form of electromagnetic radiation. They are not. Alpha particles penetrate materials more easily than gamma rays. They certainly do not. The emission of an alpha particle produces a nucleus of a different element, which because an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons, this means there's a reduction of two protons, meaning the atomic number will change, and therefore we will indeed get a different element. Gamma rays are more ionizing than alpha particles, which they are not. Therefore, our answer must be C. The graph shows the activity of a radioactive source over a period of time. What is the half-life of the source? Half-life is the time for a 50% reduction in the mass of a nuclide, which can be indicated by its radioactivity. We start with 120 counts per second, half of which is 60. Half of that is 30, and as you can see the duration for each of our halvings is 2 minutes. And we're done.